Hi, I'm Tanya Sundra and I'm a private practice equine veterinarian in Western Australia. I'm going to give you a short summary of our case series, which looked at the use of atagliflozin in the management of hyperinsulinemia and laminitis in 51 horses. As you all would be aware, hyperinsulinemia associated laminitis is commonly encountered in equine practice. However, to date, there are no medications which specifically target hyperinsulinemia in horses. Sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors, also known as SGLT2 inhibitors, are a relatively new class of human anti-diabetic medications, which have been used experimentally in horses to lower insulin concentrations and reduce the risk of laminitis. So SGLT2 inhibitors work at the level of the kidney. In a normal situation, SGLT2 is responsible for approximately 90% of glucose reabsorption, with SGLT1 accounting for the remaining 10%. SGLT2 inhibitors block this glucose reabsorption and promotes glucosuria. This in turn lowers blood glucose concentrations and therefore reduces insulin levels. So this study was a retrospective case review of horses presenting to my practice over a 13 month period. We went through the clinical records to identify the horses that have presented with hyperinsulinemia and laminitis, where no improvement was made following a minimum of six weeks of diet and management changes and who were treated with the tagliflozin for at least 30 days. So as part of our standard practice protocol, these horses were followed up every 30 days. We took blood samples to measure their insulin concentration and some biochemistry parameters. Their lameness was graded using the modified Obel scale and body weight and morphometric measurements were taken using a validated weight tape. So we ended up with 51 horses in total and these comprise largely of pony and pony type breeds. Their median age was 17 years and their lameness from laminitis had been present for a median of 41 weeks. So these were chronic cases that had not responded to diet and management changes. So as you can see from the results, the median insulin concentration pre-treatment was over 300 and by day 30 this had reduced down to a median of 43. In horses that were tested after day 60, the median insulin concentration remained at 32. The triglyceride concentration increased significantly at day 30, with one horse reaching a concentration of 16. However, by day 60, the median concentration had reduced down to one. So pre-treatment, we had a median lameness grade of 10 out of 12. By day 30, this had reduced significantly to one. And between day 30 and 240 in the horses that were followed up, the median scores remain below two. If we look at body weight and morphometric measurements, you'll see that they all reduce significantly between day zero and day 30 of treatment. As you can see from the results of this study, the use of atagliflozin was associated with a marked reduction in insulin concentration and lameness grade within 30 days. Now, no new episodes of laminitis developed whilst horses remained on treatment with atagliflozin, and this wasn't surprising given that there's been some studies which have shown that a reduction in insulin concentration also reduces the future risk of laminitis developing. All but four horses in this study developed hypertriglyceridemia, however, this was not associated with clinical signs of hyperlipemia or hepatic lipidosis. Ten owners in this study also reported signs of polyuria and polydipsia in their horses, and we suspect this might be due to the chronic osmotic diuresis that occurs due to the glucosuria. However, we, also, we did not find any signs of urinary tract infections that developed in these horses. Now, there are a number of limitations of this study. We obviously didn't have a control group because it was a retrospective case series, and we had a relatively small sample size. So whilst larger clinical trials, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic studies and long-term safety data is still needed, we feel that the results of this study indicate that atagliflozin warrants consideration as a pharmacological aid in the treatment of hyperinsulinemia and laminitis in horses and ponies. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy reading our paper. Thank you.